All right, back to the range. We just talk about you know the NBA playoffs and just what like the problem in the NFL. The NBA is talking about having a lockout themselves. Got it. So you're talking about for an entire year, no football, no basketball. Where's baseball coming to effect now? I mean that's crazy. I mean really, really and truly, the NBA lockout is basically because David Stern is on the side of the owners. The owners are tired of getting having to pay players guaranteed money for guaranteed amount of years. Um, with the Rockets situation with Tracy McGrady, you know, they don't want his contract. Yes, he's an expiring contract, but they were trying to get rid of this guy three years ago. Um, let's go with, you know, let's also go with Gilbert Arenas. $111 million over four years, and suddenly he's not even going to play for the next year. So maybe possibly two, depending on uh, where this jail is, where, you know, where his uh, trial goes. Um, but you know, but the Nets, but the Wizards are stuck with that uh, contract. Well, they possibly can get out of it. They could, but the likelihood of that happening without him having before the end of this season, which means that they don't do it by the end of the season. They have to pay next year's salary to him anyway. So I mean, if that doesn't, if that happens, then they're stuck paying him. You know, worth the two years that he didn't really play. And remember, his first, you know, the first year he was under, he was under contract, he played two games. Mm. I don't know. See, Tracy I McGrady. He, I thought that he was suspended and definitely without pay. No, Brandon. no, he, he's he's still getting paid, but it's not from the Wizards. It's from all of those endorsement deals. You know what I mean? You know, the Wizards are. You know, the Wizards won't pay him, but that's only for this year. They pay, you know, they would if he's on the roster as of, you know, right after the NBA Finals is over, then they have to pay him next year's salary, regardless. But as, as far as Tracy McGrady's situation, Tracy McGrady's able to play. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, he went to the coach and said, I want to increase my playing time. Rick Adelman said, no, it's going to mess up the team chemistry. So pretty much after that being the fallout, the T Mac just said, "Forget it." Well, with that also don't. the same one, is, it was Tracy saying he wanted to start as soon as he got off the, you know, as soon as he got back from injury. Whoa. And Rick Adelman said, "No, we want to ease you back into the, you know, back into the starting role." And when Tracy came up to Adelman and said, "You know what? I really want to start, and you know, I feel like my playing time should be increased now." Rick Adelman wasn't said he wasn't ready for that yet. So I mean, I trust Rick Adelman. Even when he was, you know, even when he was with Sacramento, I trusted him because that's what he did. You know, he was the man responsible for letting go of Chris Webber, and Chris Webber was done. Yeah, but I, I don't think Tracy McGrady's done at all. Oh no, he's not. Of course, done. I'm being biased because he's, he's my favorite done. player. He's not done. He, and he, you know, he's not my favorite player. He's mine. But, but granted, he is not done. He has a good three year, three to four years left. I give him ten years. <laughs> I wouldn't go. Because you're my favorite player, and I believe in you. Well, he's not gonna pull this whole Brett Favre thing. Of course not. Nobody can. But except for Robert Perry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, one thing you got to remember about you know this whole Tracy McGrady fallout is it's not his. It's not Tracy's fault. It's not Rick's fault. It's their two. It's those fault. Those two people. It's their fault collectively, because Tracy didn't want to understand what Rick was saying, and Rick wasn't understanding that it is time to give Tracy and Ray a little bit more playing time. So I mean, I give it both on both accounts, especially with them sitting in the ninth seat. Yeah, especially with them in the ninth seat. I don't see why they don't bring them back, but the possibility of a lockout would hurt the NBA. It would hurt the fans. NBA plus NFL, all we got is college. And then you have Major League Baseball. I'm not a baseball fan. Well, but I'm, I'm a huge baseball fan. But you know what? Baseball only goes from April to November. Okay? That's not what I want to see. Because right there, you're also missing the NFL when they start up in September. Mm -hmm. and, the they kinda, really and the NFL and the ma and Major League Baseball kind of eases you back into that kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, with, the, with baseball coming to an end, it eases its way into the NFL season. And then when the you know, NFL starts, it eases its way into the NBA season. Well, I mean, the NBA is already halfway over, but 
You know what I'm saying, that though. Then you ease into the NHL. Yeah, then it ease I'll watch a, I'll watch a hockey game before I watch a baseball game. I'm not. Well, I wouldn't go that far. I would. <laughs> Unless I would. it's live. I would. Unless it's live. I would but watch I mean, it. granted, you got to remember. You know, the number one sport in all of the world, with the number two sport of all of the world, those two missing. What do you got? Soccer. World Cup. 2010, baby. Shout out time. I want to give a shout out to Danica Patrick. Oh, okay. NASCAR debut. Yeah, she did real good. Shout out to you. Shout out to my boy David Rich. Back in back in the room. You know, he's watching Lost Tonight, big television show. I'm gonna be checking that out as soon as I get out the air. But hey, it's gonna be good. Check it. Shout out! To the Mike Moses Middle School Golden Knights. Yes, I said it. That is the team that I am that I currently just been as coaching. The basketball team did win the district tournament that they had in Henderson last weekend. They played a really good season, finished out the season undefeated with a little help of me for the press. Shots out to Nebraska's women basketball team sitting ranked number three in the nation. Undefeated. It's pretty impressive. Shout out to the Stephen F. Austin State Lumberjack men's basketball team for beating, uh, who was it that they beat on Wednesday? Nichols last week. Nichols. Beating Nichols State and, con and trying to continue their run for the Southern Conference title once again. Shout out to the people of New Orleans. I'm happy for you. Although I'm a Colts fan, I'm still very happy for you. I'm glad that you know you got a championship that you can hang up over there. Very happy for you. Speaking of New Orleans and the Saints, shout out to Jeremy Shockett. The you. <laughs> shout out to number nine of the New Orleans Saints, Drew Brees, for bringing home the hardware. Congratulations. From Texas. From Texas. That's right. Shout out. The Colts owner, Jim Irsay, for saying he will not be bringing back Hank Baskin next year. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> shout out! <laughs> Caught me off guard with that shout out. It's all good, though. It's all good. Shouts out to the Orlando Magic, especially Vince Carter, for after me ripping you. Vince Carter drops 48. And the magic wing. And that's your pause. <laughs> and I think that's it I got. Shout out! <laughs> <laughs> to the cast members of House. Last night was another great episode. And can't wait for next week. Shout out to Monday Night Raw. <laughs> for bringing back Bret Hart once again. You shot me and for inducted the million dollar man. Into the Hall of Fame. Shout out! <laughs> well, we are going crazy here today, Amy. But shout out! Holy crap, man. I don't know. I to me! Chris I can't, Gallon, I can't believe I'm going to say this. I can't believe I'm going to say this. But shout out to Sean Payton. First thing he did when they got back last night to uh, the New Orleans, you know what he did? Went down to the ninth floor. Third one. Whatever the hell it was. <laughs> Any ward. Any ward. You know, whatever the major one was, the levees that broke and everything. He went down there himself, him and Drew Brees, went down there yesterday to let everybody in that area touch Lombardi Trophy. Damn, man. On that note, very epic. We will end the range for your panel. Cleveland Spears, Wes Henderson, and the Honorable Chris Gallon. We'll see you on the next episode.